Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Get In Tune. I'm really excited about tonight because it's a topic I love. Um, so let's play the intro, and then we're going to get started. Welcome back from the intro. Um, so tonight on Get In Tune, we're going to talk animation. I haven't really talked animation on any of my Get In Tunes. I did a little tutorial a, a while back, um, but it, was, uh, it wasn't, to be honest for me, the, my best animation work. Um, I was having some issues with the software. Uh, but tonight, we're going to bring Ray Felix on uh, in a few minutes. Um, I'm going to be animating one of his characters. I already started uh, the other day. I've done a little bit. I'm in my still keyframe kind of pose. I'm going to show you guys a little bit about that. But let's bring Ray on first. And hello, Ray. Oh, how's it going? <laughs> how much are you? How you doing? Not bad. Not bad. You know, it's a, another COVID week. This is week 20, I believe. Is it? I think so. For me, anyway. <laughs> um, well, yeah, you've been inside quite a bit, huh? Oh, my God, yeah. I just started going out a little bit. but uh, You know what it was? I was actually started lockdown two weeks before everybody else because um, I wasn't feeling too hot, you know. But yeah. um, I'm alive. So <laughs> Glad to hear that. Always happy to hear when people are alive. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, no complaints. Everything's good. good. You know, I got a little stray hair there. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. a little bit of that in different places here. It's yeah, more yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be sure to donate some. <laughs> <laughs> like. Okay. So tonight we're going to talk a little bit about animation. We are cool. – um, I, I started animating a character of yours. Um, Excellent. Um, I can't wait to see it. And I haven't done anything more than what you've seen. So I'm going to show. I'm going to show a little bit of what I've done and a little bit of um, the the cleanup that I was doing. Not official cleanup, but more like just defining your character. So, right, right. And let me put up the reference picture so people can see that too. So let me share the screen here. Add to stream. So this character right here. Yeah. Um, Black on, Power. Black Power. So what I've done is I using this image as reference. I've created this rough sketch um, animation piece here, and what you're going to see is I'm going to take this off the screen. What you're going to see is his head turning, and mm -hmm. kind of like getting ready to jump into action. So he's going to jump off this building. So if I was to play what I got and I'm on my first sketch layer right now. This is this is how I personally animate. So there's this head turning. Very cool. He jumps off. And I didn't that was only my keyframes. Um meaning I don't have the in-betweens, I have no breakdowns, I have nothing except just the keyframes, which it works pretty decent with it, but you know, it could be a lot smoother. I think it looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, my next step that I do is I go over it in a kind of another color and just kind of build up the character a bit. And it's not the perfect cleaned up version. It's just a little bit more detail so I can kind of tell what I'm doing. Make a good yeah. idea. Yeah. So, like, if you see when I get to here, is it before it? I don't remember. Yeah, like, I, ha I did this kind of quick. He's sitting there kind of squinting, looking down, and then he sees danger. His eyes open, his mouth goes, oh, <laughs> I got to go. But it happens so fast. And then so he, he's going to lean back. Lean back. And then he starts mm -hmm. bending down, and he leaps forward. And then he turns, his body will turn, and he'll he'll fall down. Nice. He comes closer to the screen. Like and Black Power, the animated series. <laughs> So what I do when I um, when I uh, animate, 
Now I'm going to come to another section. Now here, I'm kind of in the middle of animating a sequence for the head turn. Um, so when I when you animate and your head turns, it naturally tilts down or tilts up depending how you're doing it. But your eyes blink. So right. it's a little messy here, but you can see his eyes kind of starting to close. Mm. Before I get to the side view, I'm going to do another another uh what's it called pose of the head right 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 so i'm going to insert a keyframe and then i'm just going to delete the head because to save time i'm just i'm keeping the body um i'm keeping the body in the same pose normally i'd probably tilt the body if i was doing like true full mate full motion mm -hmm. um but so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to turn the onion skin so I can get an idea. And you can see through the onion skin, um, I can see where the previous head is in this view. It's kind of light. And then I can see where the one after is. So right, when yeah. I draw now on this keyframe, do the in between. In, I'll be doing the in between. So you're doing like three quarter or? Yeah, it's going to be more of a, yeah, it's kind of probably going to be more of a, three quarter even though this kind of is because this isn't true profile it's going to kind of be in between and i'll and i'll go back and what i like to do is turn off my um my onion skin so i can kind of get the idea is the head turning properly so it's the way i'm looking at it right now is i need to kind of keep it down a little it has to start coming up but it it might need a little to be down just a little bit so i'm going to just move it down slightly hmm all right that's pretty and, cool and this program is adobe animate right yes i'm using adobe animate i would love to use um what's it called it's uh Doom Boom harmony but i'm that has such a strong learning curve yeah the key, it's weird that like, zoom in and zoom out is one and two I'm like what yeah. it's yeah. not plus it's minus it's different. like you know, let's say so they have a lot of interesting I think they're trying to strive for originality <laughs> and not fit in with the comfortability of actually learning new. Yeah. Oh, we got some comments. I'm sorry. I didn't get to, I, I missed the comments. So let's see what we got yeah. going on. Here. I don't think I can see them, right? Unless I put it on Facebook or something. Uh, you should be able to see them on the side, right? No, I don't see Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, oh, I see. Hold on. Live comments. Up. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Tell so us about the roach. <laughs> And Nicholas Claude says hello. So hello, Nicholas. So I was. How's gonna, it going, Nick? Yeah. Um, so I was going to ask you about uh, if you want to get to to Mike's comment. Yeah, the roach is uh, the roach is the second half. Bronx Heroes is uh, almost like a how would you say an anthology type of comic book with three different stories. Mm -hmm. So you have Black Power, obviously, is Muhammad Muhammad X, who's uh, inspired by the life of Muhammad Ali. It's like a, a what if Twilight Zone type of story where like what would happen if Muhammad Ali went to Vietnam? Like, you know, we all know in real life he uh, fought against it. But one day I woke up and I was thinking, well, what if he went? What would happen? Yeah. And, I, and you know, he wouldn't be a – and Trevor and Von Eden and I were – I had already wrote the story and gave him the script, but he was very helpful. Like he was like, well, um, I don't think he would kill anybody. Cause he's, you know, what would you, I was like, yeah, you're right. He wouldn't kill anybody. So, cause originally I was having him as a soldier. I was like, yeah, you're right. He wouldn't kill him, anybody. He would just right off the bat revolt, you know, as soon as they got there, you know? So, <laughs> and that's what I ended up doing. So thanks to Trevor, he, some of his ideas, you know, got put through, and it's interesting working with a veteran artist because they're able to like cut through some like longer scenes that you have. You know, there was like, I remember he condensed six pages into what, two or three. And I was like, what, why did you do that for <laughs> I me? Mean, I'm very anal. I want to draw every single page, you know, <laughs> it's like, but it was interesting to see how a veteran can take the same concepts and some things were lost in translation, but overall it was very successful, you know? Mm -hmm. um, 
my ego as a writer, you know, and artist, and it's like, oh, why did he change it? You know, it's like, but it's really collaboration when you're working with um, other talents. Um, and then the roach is basically, uh, some people have uh, criticized me for saying, oh, why did you make a Latin hero a cockroach? And my answer is like, well, why not? I mean, I grew up in the Bronx. We had, yeah. me and my brother killed a lot of roaches. We grew up with a lot of roaches in the house, you know. Uh, you know, my dad, um, you know, different America. He had four kids, and at age 28, he bought a house, uh, you know. Yeah. It was a different time. You can't try doing that now, <laughs> you know, 28-year-old with four kids. Um, and we had this private house, but he had other units to help pay off the mortgage because, you know, he couldn't afford it as an MTA worker. So he rented out the third floor and the first floor and we lived on the second floor. Mm -hmm. But then when you rent out to other tenants, you know, they're not as clean as you want them to be. So I mean, we had a, and we had a lady named Mrs. Roach. <laughs> I remember the day she moved out, we went up there and it was like infested. So I was like, so the Roach comes from her last name in, in one sense. Okay. And then another was, uh, that the place was so infested with roaches, it, it left a lasting impression on me for my whole life. And then my brother started drawing like a roach superhero, but his superhero more, looked more alien, like the sectors, because okay. he was really big into the sectors back then. And I was like, so I, I, he just used to draw these pictures. He, he never made an actual comic out of it. Yeah, but He was just always draw these different adventures, like these pinups of the roach. And he had like a giant head and he looked like, you know, it was like a he had a human face and an alien head, and then like a it looked very eighties, like an eighties superhero. Okay. And then years later, uh, I guess it was in the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. um, Bronx Heroes was already out, but we had more realistic stories like Jonas Bronk and uh, Runaway Slave, and then we had a story about um, a veteran from um, Iraq, and I was like, well, I want to do a two point so I started developing characters for 2.0, which is like more of a superhero aspect into it, um, while telling the history of the Bronx. Yeah. Um, 1.0 was really like historical Bronx stuff. Um, still adventure stories, but based off of history. And I was like, well, I want to base things off of history and then still have that super, mm -hmm. super heroic genre in there. Uh, okay. And then Heavy Traffic was a demonstrator in the 90s and i'm looking at the black lives matter now we're actually in the middle of rebooting heavy traffic uh tom hearn and myself and uh it's just so interesting how the black lives matter movement came it's just so pivotal mm -hmm. while i'm doing this because it's really like uh originally his story was taking place in the 90s during like the G5 summits and and then uh battle for seattle and all and i used to go to a lot of demonstrations when i was younger uh, that guy went to the, a lot of the ones in Iraq to stop the Iraq war and some really huge demonstrations that were like massive. Yeah. And it just got too dangerous. I mean, I was just like, well, I, I work, you know, I, I worked at that time in a, in a prison. I worked at Rikers Island and I was like, I knew how horrible it was. I was like, I don't want to get arrested <laughs> and be locked up where I work. And then, and I was like, <laughs> and the abuses that was going on there, um, it was horrible. So, I made a, a decision. I was like, you know, I'm not a nonviolent person. I wish I was like Dr. King or, you know, uh -huh. I'm more of a Malcolm X guy. <laughs> like if you hit me, I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> you know, and so I was just like, I can't. So I think, you know, my, my, uh, my, my spirit of uh, being a, a protester as, you know, as I got older now is, uh, affecting the comic books and influencing it. And I think the Black Lives Matter movement has reignited that passion. I mean, I really want to just go out in the streets and stuff and protest and stuff, but you know, it's different when you have like a family and kids and you're the sole supporter, you know, you get arrested, you're in jail and your family can't get around, you know, they depend on you for everything. So it's a little different and I'm 46, you know, I'm not 20, <laughs> I'm not in my twenties anymore. You know, it's like, so. But it's really influencing uh, my books uh, right yeah. now. So uh, I'm sorry I digressed. 
I see you're drawing the animation head. You're doing a good job here. I, mean, I, like, actually, <laughs> I actually forgot to cut the head off this. this hey. movie, so. Yeah. No, and this is what I want to hear. I want to hear all these stories while, while I... Uh, yeah, it's just like, it's, you know, Bronx Heroes is it's, it's basically, you know, different aspects of myself, you know. Even mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali, I mean, he didn't live in the Bronx. He lived in Harlem. The story takes place in Harlem. Mm -hmm. And then in the last issue, he ends up in the Bronx. So he ends up in the Bronx at the end. Uh, it's really like, he's really like a hero of Harlem. Um, um, and he's always been influential in my life because my father was a boxer, you know, so. I didn't you know, know that. You never told me that. That's pretty Yeah, cool. my dad was a boxer. He was a, a Golden Gloves uh, lightweight. Okay. And um, I know he was a featherweight when he was younger. After he got married, he was a lightweight. You know, he was a short guy, you know, he's about like five, five, something like that. Uh, and he was in very good shape. You know, he was a martial artist, he was a boxer, he was a soldier uh, in the 60s and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, he had a lot of fights. We had a lot of pictures of Muhammad Ali around the house when we were growing up when I was very little. That was his idol, you know. He had met Muhammad Ali. Um, I remember seeing a picture you know, of him and Muhammad Ali together at, at one of his matches. Um, then he went to go get those things laminated when I was maybe like 13 or 14. And then the guy he gave it to stole all these photos of him. So he said, well, these boxing photos of him and newspaper clippings, and he wanted to get these things laminated and preserved. And the jerk he gave it to sold them. Um, wow. Yeah, like Sugar Ray Robinson uh, also um, refereed for one of his fights at the Polo Grounds. He fought in Madison Square Garden. You know, he fought in a lot of places. Um, wow. You know, Police Athletic League, things like that. Uh, in the 60s and 70s. Um, so it's interesting. When I was born, my mom forced him to uh, stop. So as I got, was getting old, I think his last fight was probably 75. I was born in 73. All right. But he still was in shape, punching the bag, staying in shape, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, doing his thing so that's where the Ali concept comes from you know plus that was his totems Ali became his totem when he was dying of cancer to uh, fight cancer so that's where uh, that comes from it's pretty interesting yeah it is it's like it's these little threads of inspiration that uh, that come along you know yeah. yeah that's why I get annoyed when people are like oh it's black that's black panther it's like no it's not <laughs> it's like <laughs> But the, the imagery, if I bring him up again, yeah, yeah, yeah. The imagery on his helmet, basically, and his shoulder pads are Panthers, right? Uh, well, I don't want to ruin the story for you, but I don't think I've I would say I would say yes and no, but uh, that's really up to the reader to decide. I got <laughs> to sit down and, uh, and he's he's part of the black. Uh, this, this is an uh, alternate reality universe where. He's working with the Black Panther Party, so that's that's a lot to do with it. Um, but if you look at his, if you read the early issues uh, from the '90s, uh, the, I mean, well, the early 2000s of Black Power, um, I'd say Black Panther took a lot of stuff from there. Uh, specifically, uh, in the movie, uh, Black Panther basically was a Black Batman for a long time, and uh, he had no powers; he was just strong. He was yeah. a, like a like I don't know what they call it, meta. He wasn't a mutant, uh, and I don't think he was a meta human. I've read all the Black Panthers I ever read. He was a regular guy in a costume who was just a king. Uh, uh, but Black Power has the power of the ebony fist that when you, he punches, he has a purple light that comes or that surrounds him like a purple aura. They had that in the movie. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> and Brian Steelfreeze and some other guys. Uh, I don't remember who was writing it, but when they rebooted right before the Panther movie this, and the comic books, they gave him this power of purple. Then they gave him a more cat-like mask that looked a lot like the mask that he's wearing right now. So the <laughs> if anything, I, you know, you know, I would say that Black Power influenced the revamp of Black Panther. If anything, you know. So. Yeah. It's like he never had purple powers or these, you know, absorbing stuff 
you know, and you could just read any of their comics. You never had that until in, until like the comic book series right before the film. So but that's like history with DC and Marvel. They're always, uh, they don't just rip off each other. They rip off everybody else too. <laughs> I mean, Black Power was in 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 print for ten years before that movie came out. So, <laughs> yes, you know, and Duke Thomas in DC, the, the what do they call him? He was called the Lark. He was originally a Robin, a Black Robin, and then they reintroduced him in a yellow costume as the Lark. And then I sent DC a legal notice. Then they stopped using him for a bit, and then two years later they started calling him the Signal. And revamped the costume, but then I felt like, oh well, it, they changed it. It doesn't look ninety nine percent the same. But then they made the helmet more similar to the Black Power character and and the his trapezes, same patterns. And so it's kind of funny. That's just the comic book industry. They just they're just a dog eat dog uh, business. So yeah, I'm still actually arguing with them about the likenesses and demanding changes uh i just wrote them right before covid19 and during covid19 uh i've been writing their their legal department and we've been having a back and forth you know between this and punchline and that's a whole nother ball of wax you know yeah. but uh when, when are we gonna see this black power cartoon man i got the bronx uh, heroes animated series <laughs> i don't know man this is taking me a while to do i started this on saturday um, we we need five hundred more of you. Let's get, let's get. It. I need to test the the, the headshots and stuff. You're you're the, you're the lead animator. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, so just what I did to test it for those who are who don't understand um, Adobe Animate. Uh, I was animating at a twenty four frames per second, which means there's twenty four images that move across the screen. Yeah. In one second. But it's moving a little too fast for me to see. So when you animate for web, you usually animate it on either 12 seconds uh, frames per second or 15. So I lowered it down to 15. Right, right. Grouping the head turn to see if I Very like Very cool. And to me, it's moving a little fast. I think it's cool. It looks more natural. Hey, Greg says hi. Greg Yozo. Yes. Mike Lopez says, I, I like your Bronx Hero shirt. Did I see that in the Comic-Con scene of Ted 2? Um, this was there actually, and so was the Runaway Slave shirt, which is out of print. These both are. This is actually a Black Power shirt here. It was from one of the first the original cover of. Uh... Yeah, that looks great. I think the the, the 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 more frames you add in there, looks good. Yeah, and and what I'm doing, and what I usually do, and just so you guys know, um, they're, they're all technically in betweening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the keyframes. But when I have a keyframe, like let's say, where's the keyframe? So this is a keyframe, and that's a keyframe. Right. I usually will do what we call a breakdown drawing, which is the one like in between the keyframes, and then there's the in betweens in between the breakdown. But technically, it's still an in between. It's just yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just the like he's doing neck exercises, you know. He's like stretching. Yeah. <laughs> like... Well, I love. I actually like this. What I'm not happy with, to be honest. It's good. Is He's scanning this, the city. Is this picture, is the head shot in here? I, I think I, based on how I'm changing him up in turns, mm -hmm. it doesn't fit with it anymore. So I got. Yeah, I think you drew like my nose on his mask. I think that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, it's I also like tilted it out like. <laughs> big or wide. So I'm gonna go and not not right now, but I will go in and adjust that head. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'll show you, you know, let me give you an idea of what would come next, right? So if I go, uh, let's get a new layer real quick and let me lock the layer I was editing on here. Oh, I didn't mean to pull it, turn it off. What did so you do? I, I hit the eye accidentally. And made it <laughs> so let's get to something, a pose I really like. Um... That is really cool. Like, I like right, how he just dips down there. Yeah, I actually this is my favorite part. His whole. His What's whole funny thing. is that he actually starts in issue five on a rooftop of a building that's just about to collapse. So I think that's pretty interesting uh, so, that you, you decided to draw him on the rooftop looking down. He's actually doing that. He's actually doing exactly that. That's watching the military invade Harlem. 
you know, I, I, which I, I, was I real, know, which I really know happened. I've really read a lot of your work. I've seen it at shows. We've done tons of shows together. But I've never really had a chance to sit down and read your books. I, I knew oh, my God. How could you say that? <laughs> <laughs> so what I would do now. I'm offended. I'm deeply offended here. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose another color. And it doesn't matter what color you're using. Uh, I would make, even go in black. It's okay. I can gray it out now. Yeah, yeah. But what I want to do on this frame is really just try to get the feel of your character. So, mm. like, he has, it, it's almost like up here are ears, correct? Like, yeah, they're like ears on the mask, yeah. yeah. Uh, let, me, let me get my, uh, my uh, this little sample there. All right. Yeah. I mean, I could actually send you a 3D file of the the, the 3D model of it. This is just the the, the rough I'd print. Love, hold on, you know, I'm but, gonna I'm gonna but if, if you the screen for a second so everyone can see yeah. that. If you look at this, oh, it's all oh, it's too white. It's too bright. Hold on, let me. Yeah. Gray, man. <laughs> let me let me let me lower some of the lights for a second. Hold on. Okay, that's so. Oh, well, that's way oh, too bright. <laughs> it looks like a white glow. So if you see the ears here on the side. Right here. Yeah, and they go back. It, it goes back. Yeah, uh, Paris Collins drew them pointing up like Batman horns, and I had to redraw all of his ears. <laughs> but this is like, there you go. You can see that. Yeah, see how it goes back. back. There we go. Yeah, I get that. I can see that. Got that nice. So yeah, it's a very, it's a very slick looking mask, you know. Mm -hmm. And what's funny is like when I first designed him, I made him like yellow and gold, like gold, like a yellow orange. But um, someone said, "Hey, it looks like a black Wolverine." So I was like, "Okay, I'm changing it." So we turned his costume to purple. So when what's hilarious is that when they actually and this is fist when they actually um, when DC ripped it off, they actually used the posters that we gave out at Comic Con mm -hmm. in the yellow costume, the yellow orange costume. So I thought that was pretty hilarious that they stole the old design after we changed it. You know. So he basically has the fist on his chest, you know. You know, oh. his costume is like, he has like the ribbed versions yeah, here. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, there's a, it's a lot of detail. Tom Ahern says oh, that costume has too much detail on it. He has like the panther heads on the shoulder blades, like the the, the cat heads, right? You know, it's like he's got the ankh on the glove on one side, and then the uh, the Muslim the Muslim symbol on the out, other our side of the arm. So. This was like a, I wasn't too happy with this this cast because um, the details of this um, were really amazing on the, the the CG version. And when they printed it, you know, they had those, they smoothed it out so much that they got kind of like, looks like a, you know, like a Roman statue. Yeah. But it gives you the idea. Yeah, this is a badass dude, you know. So, um... <laughs> So I was actually trying to make these in China, mass produce these, and uh, I sent it out to five different companies for quotes, and then they didn't get back to me. I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to see black power figures all over China, you know? It's like, oh no, you'll see them in the in the dollar store mixed with. Uh, right, I'm like, oh my god, these, you know, and then I try to reach out to them, you know? Yeah, if that happens, you're you're you're. They have you know, both. They have the Roach and him, so it's just like you know. So that, that's his, uh, this is about eight inches tall, you know. That's cool. I mean, I, and and who built the model for that? Oh, man. One of my very talented students. I can't take credit for it. Uh, my former student, uh, Val. Great guy. Great designer. I mean, well, when I worked at the, uh, the high school of information technology high school, um, I was doing, um, I was teaching Photoshop, Illustrator, Flash, Poser, mm -hmm. and and there was another program. I don't remember the other one. Uh, and then Val was a student, and yeah. um, he was he was so good. The principal gave him a class. So there was a teacher that was like kind of like moderating it. But Val was this teenager, man. He was so amazing that he was basically teaching the class, <laughs> teaching all these kids 3D Max, and it was just amazing. 
you know, and the teacher knew some stuff, but he didn't know 3D Max. But and they were like everybody was doing like this. And he went on to SBA. We went on a school trip to SBA, and I remember telling him, "Bring your laptop and bring your bring your 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 portfolio. We're gonna get you in." He had already applied, but he didn't hear a response. And we we're going on the tour. And I was like, "Hey, man," I told the, the tour guide. I was like, "He's like one of these uh, one of the office people up there." I was just like, "Hey, man," he brought his portfolio. He's like, "Oh, well, you gotta take the steps. You gotta apply." So he did all that. You guys have his application. I said, "You gotta look at his work." So he's like, okay after the tour, and we they were so impressed with his work. They were so impressed that they fed the entire class. <laughs> like they treated the entire class to lunch. They're like, yeah, we need this guy. He's this is our guy. So they saw yeah. his portfolio. They gave him an interview. They saw his application. They literally just basically picked them up right off the spot right there. That's you know. Cool. And uh, two other guys were going to go with him, but then they decided to go to these other schools that were a little, a little bit cheaper, a little bit more affordable. I mean, SV is expensive, but my oh, yeah. philosophy is like, you want to go to college, you go to the best of the best and figure it out later. <laughs> you know, pay as you go. I was, um, I was supposed yeah. to go to SVA, but when I turned, you know, 18, as you know, I had my first kidney transplant. Oh, yeah. So I had to be close to the hospital for what we call clinic and stuff. And, yeah. uh, and I couldn't just constantly. Oh, it's hard, man. Art yeah, school is so tough. I, so I went to local Westchester Community College first. Mm -hmm. and then, were, were they nicer to you? Because in SBA, they, they had teachers that were basically your future competitor. And they were like, you're not going to make it. You should quit. <laughs> I, I think it depends on the teacher I had. I mean. That was I, all my teachers. <laughs> uh, I had a really great teacher. His name was, uh, he still is because he's still around. His name is Donald Heller. Right. And Donald was, like, he, the first program that I learned was a program called Director, which they don't use anymore. Mm. Oh, I, you know what? I've been animating and, and having you on the screen this whole time. Oh, wow. Let me, let me bring the animation. In. I'm sorry, good. guys. For That's those okay. watching, I've had I've been having a good conversation. I know I'm pretty and everything, but yeah, the cartoon is kind of like the reason why we're here. <laughs> so I, I do I do stuff like that all the time. I'm sorry, guys. That's fine. Um, this looks good. Thanks. So, but Donald, I was taking a program called Director, and I've mentioned this on either in credit chat or on here. I don't remember. Um, I don't know why this isn't drawing right now. There it goes. Yes, it's um, great. Thank you. Um, what I, what he did though was I, in high, I've always loved puppets and mm -hmm. in high school or not even in high school, I was, I'd always take a day off once a month. My parents knew I needed kind of a break and they'd give me a day off once a month. I'd stay home. And the one thing I usually did if I wasn't drawing was build puppets. I'd try to figure out different designs. I had books on puppet building all this stuff. But my dream was to always animate. And so I went to, um, you know, I went to the SVA stuff. I did everything I was supposed to. I was basically in. And then I got sick. And that I had sucks. to stay close to WCC. So I take this program called Director that, that Donald's teaching. And we, we kind of became, you know, over the years, became very friendly with each other. Um, but he he would bring in puppets, and he would do more traditional hand puppets, um, like glove puppet type of stuff, um, Punch and Judy style type of puppets. And, nice. and he would talk about the puppets and how it related to animation. Um, and it was, just, it was just a fantastic time, and it was because of what he taught me that led me getting my, my very first job the first semester nice. of college. And he actually worked at the same company with me for a little bit. Um, so it was, it, was, it was pretty good. And then, um, then what happened? I don't know. Eventually, it ended, you know, school ended for me there. And, um, you know, Donald move on. Last I last time I spoke to him, and he was living somewhere up in Massachusetts, and he also had a band. He had a family band, 
and they would play like you know medieval renaissance style uh instruments and he played the hurdy-gurdy cool so he was called the hurdy-gurdy man do the hurdy-gurdy hurdy -gurdy? <laughs> was that star trek of undiscovered country was it I don't, already already. I, I, know what you're talking. I don't remember where it's from, though. <laughs> and um, I thought it was the Uba Duba. Do the Uba Duba. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, I know what you're talking about, though. And so. That's cool, though. I mean, hey, you know, it doesn't really matter where you go. It's really about how, how intensely you take your learning, you know. And that's what it was for me. I mean, I... I learned so much that by the time, and I was self-taught. I've always said this about artists. We're always self-taught. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I never consider myself a teacher. I consider myself a guide. Right. You know, I, I can demo things, and I'm not really sure I'm teaching it to you. I'm just showing you stuff, and then you, at the end of the day, you go back to your computer, your drawing pad, whatever it is, and you go over the stuff that I've demoed. And once you learn that, then then you are a uh you know then you're actually understanding what happened in the in the work right you know true very happened. true i'm gonna turn this off real quick let's see how he's coming out that looks fantastic thanks i think i need to work a little on the head more i feel i don't have his costume down yet his helmet yeah we're getting you know? there yeah, I, gotta, I, I really got to play around with with that. Yeah, you got the brow right. That's where the line really follows the mm -hmm. the brow ridge, and then goes further back into the ear, and then the inner. Yeah. Uh oh, we got somebody here named Tom. Tom Siaka. Oh, you got Carmelo over here. Carmelo Torres, my cousin. Oh, cool. Hey, how's it going? He's also an artist. I would say Carmelo was probably the artist. He lived upstairs for me. Um. When he first got married, and he was really the artist that really influenced me as a kid, and he was a graphic designer uh, by trade. Uh, so, and talking about artists, self-taught. So he was self-taught, you know. That's fantastic. Yeah, he did a lot of great stuff. I mean, what's funny is that the new Fantastic Four. I swear to you, mm -hmm. I don't know where this drawing is. Either I have it or he has it. But in the eighties. <laughs> He did a Mr. Fantastic with a beard. He drew a really somber looking thing that wasn't as rocky uh, mm. as the thing. And he did this yellow human torch, like pure fire, like it wasn't red. And he did his own like futuristic take of an evil Fantastic Four. And I swear to you, that's the Fantastic Four that's in the comics right now. <laughs> I, yeah, I, haven't, I haven't read the Fantastic Four. Um, I mean, he's like, he did. You know, I actually, speaking of the Fantastic Four, I actually just watched that movie from, what was it, 2015? <laughs> um, I remember, I was like, I remember being so impressed. Like, he gave Mr. Fantastic a goatee, and this is like in the 80s. And look, you got Mr. Fantastic here in a black and blue costume with a beard. That's exactly what he did. Yeah. He made a black and blue costume. And this, like, exactly that. I was like, I don't know. Maybe it's a coincidence. Who knows? I don't know if he ever submitted that to Marvel. It could be oh. a coincidence. But maybe he was, like, foretelling, forecasting, you know? We have, like, a little bit of a that for, uh, premonition gene in our in our family. So who knows? Maybe. <laughs> so you're gypsies and stuff. Is what you're... <laughs> no, we just got a lot of weird relatives that I <laughs> can see into the future, see beyond the pale, as you, as you say, you know, but yeah, I mean, I just blows, blows me away that they have, this is the way he looks. And I was like, that's exactly. And if you look at the human torch in the back, he's, he's like this reddish fire. He's like, it's exactly the same. Yeah. I was just, it blows me away, but you know, who knows, man, you know, the comic book industry, you know, they're very selective of who they let in, you know, you know, it's like I find I feel a little cheated, but at the same time, I'm actually happy because I spent uh, a great fortune in conventions and mm -hmm. publishing and things like that and doing shows with with as a young man, aspirations of uh, um, being a comic book industry, working in the industry. And uh, I think the best thing that ever happened was Bronx Heroes and actually self-publishing because I, I can say that 
in 20 years of doing my in independent comics yeah. that uh, I own every single property that I ever created. And had I worked for yeah. DC or Marvel or any other company, I wouldn't be able to say that. No, I mean, it, you know, no. you have all these amazing artists at these comic cons, the guys that shaped my childhood and they don't own any of that. They're, there's no residuals. There's no, there's nothing, you know, there's, they, they, they don't get royalties. If they do, it's very skimpish in comparison. So, I mean, Tom can tell you, he works for both the industry. I mean, yeah. and Tom Siak, I mean, he, he really took Bronx heroes to the next level with, uh, with the, the publisher when we decided to do the Trump land book. So hats off to Tom too. I mean, Tom is uh, Tom a blessing, is Tom. you know, Tom is a fantastic guy, fantastic artist. I love his stories. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, he's enjoy chatting with him. He's the man. Tom mm -hmm. is the man, you know? So I find it funny that, you know, the, they ripped off firestorm from him and then, They've been taking a bunch of shit from me over the years. It's just like, I find it like we just kind of like found each other and they were both Sagittarius. So <laughs> it worked out well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. I think I'm going to just kind of keep that like this. Um, that looks great, man. That looks fantastic. I'm trying to simplify it. If I was to do this, um, in my style, I'm kind of not that I'm working in your style, but if I was to do this like strictly in my cartoony style that I normally mm -hmm. draw, he would be a lot. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? He'd be a lot elongated. He'd have a lot of elongated features, you know. Like if I was to draw just quickly, I'll show you. Him, I'll use a kind of a bright color here. So if I was to draw him, his head would kind of be more like this. His body, it might even be a little more Bruce Timish. Oh yeah, I love Bruce Tim. Oh. oh my god, I met him in <laughs> I met him in San Diego. You know, so you get nervous when you meet like your yeah. your, your fan. <laughs> I got a funny Bruce Tim story. He's talking to Jim Lee, I think it was. It was my first year in San Diego, and I was just outside. You know, the show was closing up. Everything is people are leaving. Actually, no, it was, it was around lunchtime actually, but people were leaving for in droves, like I guess to eat something. And there goes Bruce Tim talking to this guy. And then uh, I go up to him. And I just, like shake his hand. Hey, can I get a picture of you? He said, yeah, sure, sure. We take a picture together, whatever. And then, <laughs> and then like, you know, your brain plays funny tricks on you. I know he's Bruce Tim. I know, I know he's his animations. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, man, I love your early stuff. <laughs> I said, I know, I, I love the Batman stuff and everything, but I love your early stuff. He's like, really? I was like, yeah, man. I said, like, I, I loved you in Tour of Duty. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you ever watched Tour of Duty, but that's actually Kevin Conroy, the voice oh. of Batman. <laughs> it was a Vietnam show on CBS. <laughs> and he just gave me this confused look. <laughs> and then it hit me. I was like, oh, shit. Like, Take care. <laughs> His, uh, by the way, right off. this is the style I would have drawn him. I like that. That's cool. If I was to do my style. Yeah, man, you got to follow your bliss. Yeah, that looks good. Well, I yeah. wanted to try to keep it a little truer to your comic, you know? I, uh, I've actually drawn him. I did a kid's book called Bronx Heroes Junior, Heroes for Health. Uh, it was a PSA for Community Board 7. And we did a, a, a animated version, kid's version of the, all the Bronx Heroes. It was a cartoony right. like that. Yeah, I, I should do another one. We, we should collaborate. Totally. I'm going to... Um... It was a coloring book. It was an activity coloring book with a story. So you read it like a comic, but it was also a coloring book. Sorry, I'm just adding in... That looks great. No, you're doing I'm a good job. Pasting. I'm just pasting that image because I want to keep it. Yeah, yeah. Uh... I'm just fascinated how I'm looking at Adobe. It's. I think these animation programs, they're all trying to stand out and be different from each other. I think Hold on. they make themselves more universal to each other. Yeah. I think it's an opportunity to get more people to get into animation, you know. Yeah, no, you know, a lot of, and, and I've talked to you about this in the past, but Adobe, um, you know, Flash, everyone was saying Flash was dying, Flash was dying. Flash didn't die. What died... I don't think so. Was, I think Macromedia died. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, this is even after Macromedia to me, but... 
Right. Um, let me get that black back. Um, what it was to me was Flash Player, and everyone right. called it Flash, and you know, he, so I don't like that. The I way. used to do a lot of GIF animations in the early web when I first had my very first website and did all my comics had GIF animations, but like to promote them, I should do that again. And so who has the time for this? I love the idea of GIF files. And, um, yeah, so it was like a very interactive. I'm starting to do that. I'm using Placeit.net now. But that's more like, and doing some stuff on that. Like I bought a subscription on that. I'm not it, familiar with that one. What does that do? That's like, uh, it's like it was designed for Twitch and Instagram to make short videos and and little intros and outros and banners and it's like really for gamers. But they also, it's a huge website. They even do cups and T-shirts, which I haven't delved into that aspect yet. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to use it for web for the you know for the Bronx Heroes Live uh, opening. Like I created that opening on there, and, but there's so much software out there that's so similar, you know. So just like Streamyard here, that like what you're using. I mean, that looks pretty cool too. And Streamyard now just opened up. I don't know if it's to free members or if it's only to paid members. I don't remember. But now I can have up to ten people on a stream, including right, right. me as the host, and then nine others. If it's something that um, I got to see if it's part of the free account because if it's part of the free account, that's great. And did I just delete what I did? I don't see the black outline anymore. Or did I turn it off? I hope not. You turned it uh, off. Let me see the eyeballs there. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, looking at the eyeball to see what was on his left arm. So on his left arm is the. the this arm looks fantastic. Okay. You could do the whole Stan Lee. <laughs> Remember Stanley, Spider-Man, and his amazing friends. Oh, I Hello love they're true believers. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. I still watch it on Disney Plus. Yeah, the great um, narrator Stanley. He's like a. <laughs> I'm actually right now watching on um, on the on the uh, on the Disney Plus app. You remember when they had that really? It was a few years ago. That really kiddie show. Um, was it Marvel Superhero Squad or something? Oh yeah, I hated that show. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I kind of get a kick out of it. It was cute. Um, it I was cute, it. but uh, yeah. I hated that show. I really liked the Disney ones. Actually, they were the closest to the comic books when Disney started doing the Avengers. And oh yeah, yeah. I mean, those those were great. Those and, are great. I mean, especially the Kang episodes. You know. Yeah. Talking about animation, I mean, what's your favorite animation? Mine's Akira. That's my all time. Um, you know, God, you know, it's tough for me to say. I think it depends on my mood. Um, you know, I'm a big Hanna Barbera fan, but I love Disney, mm -hmm. and like, and I think I told you this story. As a as a Disney fan, as a kid, it was 1989. Little Mermaid came out. I didn't want to see it. It was. You know, I'm like, it's a girl movie. Why do I want to watch a thing about a girl? <laughs> you know, and, and for my sister, when it came out on videotape, we bought the videotape, I don't remember. And I sat there and watched it with her. And I'm like, yeah, this is pretty okay. And then they come to, it's, it's pretty close in the beginning, they come to the Part of the World song. And there's that moment where she's like kind of swimming up the cavern and yeah, that was great. Trapped that in this, this circular, like frame, and she tries to reach out, and then realizes she's not gonna to reach what she wants. She pulls her hand back, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I was, I don't know, I just kind of connected with that. Right, um, right, right. Wanting to maybe, maybe it was. Was that the uh, gadgets and gizmos song? I got yeah. gadgets and gizmos are plenty. All that stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's all. Who's it's and, and what's it's galore? Yeah. Yeah, that was the problems. I got twenty, you know. <laughs> yeah, I actually took a, a good. Friend. It was a girls' movie. I felt the same way, but I was fifteen. I was like, "Oh, I gotta! I'll just take my friend and her little sister to go see it." So I was like, "You know, we're like, oh, you know, let's take take the girls to see it, you know, and then you know, it's okay if I'm there." <laughs> but that that moment for me that I connected with, I was like. I've always wanted to be an animator, and that moment is what I connected with, where it was like, that's what I want to make people feel, what I just felt right now. Right, yeah, and that's a beautiful and cartoon. Like, and I'm like, okay, and to this day, it's still probably one of my favorite movies, and mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm in the right mood where I'm, I've been animating on and off for a while, or I, I haven't touched animation, that, that scene right there can literally tear me up. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember getting the old teary eyed there, too. Yeah. Oh. And it wasn't so teary eyed with the, <laughs> the priest and the Ursula's marriage and stuff, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, I know what I, uh, I, I, you know what? I think Ursula might be one of the best Disney villains. Honestly, yeah. I, I loved, I've seen all those movies in the theater. I saw Aladdin. I thought that was great with the tiger head comes out, out of the sand. Um, everything. I think I've seen Beauty and the Beast. The last Disney movie I probably saw in the theater, cartoon wise, shoot, I can't remember. Well, all the Pixar stuff, you know. Yeah. I don't, I don't count Pixar as Disney. Okay. The last official Disney cartoon that I saw was probably uh, Lilo and Stitch with yeah, my I daughter. I didn't see that in the theater, but that was that's a fun movie. That one was great. And then, of course, I seen everything Pixar, except I didn't see Wally in the theater, but I saw everything else in the theater. I Actually, what's funny is that when my daughter was a baby, I took her to see Toy Story, the first one. Mm -hmm. And by the time the third one came out, <laughs> I took her to see the third one, you know? Mm -hmm. And oh my god, I was such a little like you know, girl crying. <laughs> my oh, daughter, everybody was. And, and my freaking daughter is looking at me like, "What's wrong with you?" <laughs> I saw that movie with my wife and her mother. Right, right. And that scene comes up, and every, I'm like, I want to like, like the timeline as he's getting older and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then I turn and I look at everybody in the theater and it's like a river of tears. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah everyone's cry. crying. I let it out. And and to this day, I still cry at that scene. And my, my daughter is looking at me like, what's wrong with you? But it's just like, <laughs> yeah, you don't get it. Um, it's like, yeah, but she was a baby on the first one. And I kind of literally like she grew up as this movie grew, yeah. grew up, you know? <laughs> Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> but I don't enjoy animation the way I used to. You know, ever since it's become digital, I hate to say it, but it's lost something. You know, Pixar is the exception, but I mean, and Miyazaki is the exception, but but even Miyazaki, like if you look at Princess Mononoke versus oh, Ponyo or, uh, or uh, I mean, he's good. But I mean, you could tell the digital stuff is just, it, it, it's lacking, especially cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons disappeared, I think, because of that, because of this whole, um, not just the internet, but just because the Cartoon Network and all these cartoons, it just, they're not interesting. And then they have these weird themes or they have adult themes with her kids' cartoons. And I'm like, yeah, you know, what the, what's going on here? I don't understand this. And, you know, and I love writing for adults. I mean, I write for both kids and adults. But I keep my, you know, I don't mix my chocolate with my peanut butter. You know what I'm saying? I keep everything separate. You know, it's not like well, a career. It's not I'm pretty, pretty much, the, let me turn off the background so I can see this better. Um, yeah, I don't do that. I don't. I don't mix it up. You know, if it's a kids book, it's a kids book. If it's an adult book, it's an adult book. Yeah. You know, it's not for kids. <laughs> Make sure of that. No, I know. I mean, I'm. I, I'm kind yeah. of. Sick, but most of my stuff is all is usually kid friendly. Yeah. And, um. You know, I. I think a lot of animation, and it's not because of the digitalness. I think it's come down to cost. Right, right, right. In the old, you know, I don't want to call it the old days, but in the old you know, days, you know, animation. <laughs> we were young. Animation was done in America up until about the what late sixties, early seventies. It started going overseas. Uh -huh. Filmation was the only company that was keeping it in America, and then when they faded out in, I believe they closed doors officially in eighty nine or eighty eight, something like that. Right. Animation was all overseas. So if you work on something like The Simpsons. You may have created like keyframes or whatever, and right. then it was sent out overseas to be done in, um, in uh, what's it called? Um, you know, overseas uh, to ha finish the in betweens and coloring and all that other stuff. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, so a lot of jobs kind of faded away in America. Well, that's because they were union busting. That, that's the dilemma that we find ourselves with COVID-19, we, we couldn't find masks because everything was being made in China. And, you know, and you got to blame Reagan and, and Clinton for that, for like, uh, basically Reagan for union busting and, 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 uh, allowing corporations to have more power and control where they can go overseas and then not have to pay penalties. Like you and I, we want to, 
put together a production, if you want to get your cartoon made overseas, you're going to pay a, a lot in taxes where if you're oh, totally. a billionaire, you're not paying anything, you know, or very little. No, no, I, I agree. And I no. want, and you know what I, and one of my issues is I know I could put out a really good product if I had the time or the team. I right. don't, you know, and, and this is not to sound like conceited or have an ego or anything. I've always kind of considered myself very much like Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is, um, Walt wasn't the best artist. I think I'm I'm probably better than Walt. I'm a, I'm a good artist. Um, I'm good for what I do at least. And mm -hmm. but Walt knew how to tell a story. He knew how to surround himself with people who can help him. You know, right. and I and I and I think first and foremost before anything I do. I'm just a really good storyteller. I think right. I know how to make a story work correctly. Right. And, um, you know, and to me, that's, that's kind of the important, the important thing. So it's for, for me finding out how to get the rest, um, of it done. You know, like I told you, I have an animation I want to do. It'd probably be about three to five minutes long tops. Right. And, I love I love the idea. It's a concept about an old man who's near death because he's starving, and you know he he just wants to get basically get like food in him, you know. And he's he, he, the narration is basically his mind. It's a, right. it's a narrated cartoon. Nah, this isn't really what I was going for, but um, it's not too bad there. Uh, I'd have to go. In, I'm going to go in and fix that better. But, um, you know, when I look at that and I see what I want to do, I'm like, okay, what's the program for me to animate and what's going to tell it to me the best? How long is it going to take me to do? Right. If I had, you know, a three-minute animation with a tweet, probably could, like, the quality I want could probably take me two, three months to do. Right. But doing it on my own. And am I doing full motion like I'm doing here? Am I doing puppet animation, which is another way that a lot of the cartoons work today. Right. You know, what is, what is it that I'm doing that would allow me the best opportunity to complete it to the way I want, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have to think about things like that all the time. And, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I'm really eager to do this animation. I've, I've had this written for maybe over a year now. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't like the way I put the fist on here. I'm going to have to probably rethink either the design of the character, keep keep the the pencil test that I did here, um, like remove this and this, and where is this one here? Why why is what am I not? Why is it not disappearing? Oh, nope. I find that with the Toon Boom too. I'd save a file. And then I go back to it, and then it's like quirky, like doesn't want to play, and I'm like, oh, it's on drawings, it's not on. Yeah. The other thing, I, I think. Uh, you know, what? I think if I go back in my own style with this and 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 redo everything I just did, which took to. probably be about maybe about two hours of work, I think I can clean this up a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, not that I can't draw in the comic style that I've been drawing and I just feel the angles I'm doing or at least maybe right. the thickness of the pen. Maybe more in your, your own element, you know? Well, no, I, I don't know. Cause like what I'm drawing here, let me get to a new layer. Right. I have it set to three points, I believe. Right. Um, mm -hmm. let me get the brush on and go to the tool. So it's on a three point size. This mm -hmm. is the lowest setting. This is me. And I have it on uh, pressure sensitivity so I can get, a little thicker with it right but maybe i need to be thicker maybe i need to be thinner i don't know i can't go um where is right. size? i can't go lower than three to my oh i can go to a one how would one look that looks very thin but it might work better being right. thinner in that style whereas if i was to draw mine even if i went up to something like a five i think it would work out well hmm. you know like and I don't know if you know this, but there's a lot of people who, I don't know if they still do it, but years ago, used to draw their comics in Flash. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Because I used to do Illustrator. I did a few comics on Illustrator, which is vector-based, and then I stopped. 
I think I should have kept up, kept it up, but because I wanted that slick animation look. Um, yeah. This guy who did Stone Rabbit, I forget his name. I'm terrible with names, but uh, he was very talented. He did a, his book in Illustrator. That blew me away. I was like, wow, because I was like, these lines look so clean. I was like looking at his. It looked like a like a like an animated cartoon. I don't know if you've read that book, Stone Rabbit. I forget. Nice guy. I um, you know who I'm thinking who does stuff like this? Um, and it was Illustrator. You know, yeah, no. Um, Robert is his last name Feldman. He uh, does a book, um, OK Psycho or something. I think it's called. I don't right. know. I read it. I have it in 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 my studio somewhere. It's a great book. But he works in animation. So what he does is he builds everything in in Adobe Anime or right. Flash. I don't know what version he's using, and then. So he'll build backgrounds, he'll do it, and he works like he's working in animation. And one yeah. of the things is if you go to file, I believe it's under export image. Right. And then it's going to come up where it's And some people use SketchUp as well. You ever seen that website, SketchUp, where they can get yeah. backgrounds and vehicles and so just you, you choose the angle in 3D. I used to use Poser for comics at one point. I was dabbling with it. I didn't commit fully to it. But I just thought the the... It actually helped me getting into animation, like when I was studying Maya and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't commit to those programs because it took so much time and energy that I just, my real passion was always comic books. So I just, yeah. I always loved animation too, but it was just like, but that's what really nailed down perspective for me as a, as a kid and as a young adult growing up. I always had difficulty with perspective, but it wasn't until I started t touching the 3D animation programs like Maya and, and Poser that I started to um, get it. You yeah. know, like, oh, I see now. It's like I needed that. And that's my fascination with it is just space, creating movement through space, you know, creating something from nothing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, yeah, I love Akira, like the hand-painted cells and, mm -hmm. oh, my God, that cartoon's just so amazing. Oh, it's a beautiful film. Um, and then they did a TV series. I don't think it ever came to America, but they, they did a TV series on Akira. And it was so shitty. I mean, excuse my language. It was like so, you know. <laughs> Boop. It's a, it was just so. <laughs> it's okay, man. I'm going to actually just stop drawing because of my, my hand. I've been drawing a lot today and doing and teaching art. So. Same here, um, yeah. I've been doing a lot of stuff. It's, um, it's you know, I, I think I'm going to read reattempt this a different way a little bit more like i said my style have that little bruce timish feel to it oh, yeah um, but yeah it's uh it'll uh, it'll get done at some point i got my children's book i'm working on right now mm -hmm. um so once that's done this will be this will be like what i do in between break time you know um i'll get you this hopefully before the summer's over hold on a second let me show you this thing hold on yeah yeah This is, uh, this is the, the Bronx Heroes Junior Heroes for Health. I have it in a frame. Oh, nice. It was a coloring book. We also used these these characters. They were, since they were so kid-friendly, we used them for, um, for uh, the White Plains Comic Con the first two years when I was uh, running it. With um, Nancy and uh, and uh, a few other people at the White Plains Youth Bureau, um, so this was like a kitty, you know, version of Black Power and heavy traffic, and we've been throwing GA American. We have uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, we call them the the Brooklyn Raven. Also, I just renamed him the Cardinal, but there's like the Brooklyn Raven. We had the Sparrow, and then Red Alert, which is this is actually another version of uh, the Punchline character, but we called a Red Alert. Mm. And then this is uh, the All American Boy, who is like, which was like an inside joke between a friend of mine that when I first started doing zines, we did this thing called the All American Boy. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, me and my buddy Jeff, it was. 
<laughs> so I, I kind of like kept them alive and as a cartoon, as you know, that's all about cartoons and comics that we stay, we, they, they stay the same age and, and we get older. Like Batman's 80 years old. I mean, really? Yeah. I mean, I would love to see a comic book of Batman really is 80 and, and Wonder Woman and all of them. What would they be? Oh, you know, it's like, was, <laughs> wasn't that Kingdom Come? Did they yeah, have I guess. I guess, but they weren't really their true ages, though. Yeah, right? they were like, yeah, I guess Kingdom Come would have been like, I guess, yeah, you could say that. I don't know. I mean, I haven't read that in a I while. Just thought, I just thought Alex Ross's models are getting older. It's like, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure he has enough photo reference for uh, for things. Uh, yeah, I mean, people, I, I like Alan Moore. Uh, I mean, not Alan Moore, um, Alex Ross, but um, I do like Alan Moore. But um, I read an interview with him, and I was really surprised that he said he did. He never learned how to mix colors, so everything was straight from the tube. I was like, really? Like, interesting. Yeah, everything was uh, so everything is a, the color. He just gets the the color that he needs. He never learned how to mix, you know. And then he photographs a lot of stuff, and then light boxes. Oh, yeah, it. totally. So I, I mean, but he's an amazing airbrush artist. It's a dying art, you know. Yeah, and no, I've watched a lot of not a watch. I've read a lot of in, you know interviews with him and behind the scenes stuff. And I I think I might have like a draw magazine or something, one of those kind of magazines that right. has an article about him somewhere. And it's, it's fascinating to see how he works and how all these other artists that you know I admire work. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's funny too because I don't do realism. I don't even really like realism. But when Alex Ross does it. Right, Looks you know, good. it's like I wanna, I wanna read it. I wanna look at it. You know, it's, right. you know, and I'm not, I'm not big on on the, on my comics looking real, because I want, it is a fantasy. I want them to be continue to be fantasies. You well, know? Jack Kirby used to call it the super deformed. You know, yeah. People are like, oh, his characters are too blocky. They don't look real. But it's like, yeah, look at how how to draw the Marvel way. It's not about real. That's what makes them superheroes. That they they're not normal people they're not anatomically correct yeah. you know that's why you have a giant fist coming at you <laughs> it's like <laughs> you know a giant leg running it's like it's like super dynamic it's almost like he's taking like burn hogarth's dynamicism will eisner's dynamicism and he just made his own you know yeah no that's you know? absolutely true he he was you know that's why he's called the king you know <laughs> right and I really get tired of people trying. Still, comic books are still obsessed with realism. Like everybody looks the same. Like Jim Lee, everyone's doing Jim Lee. Like he's the new Kirby. Like everyone's doing the the house style is Jim Lee. You know, like everyone's trying to look like him. Like David Finch and all these other names that I can't remember, but they're all Jim Lee clones. You know, I was like, this is like DC doing Image in the nineties. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest. I love when DC had that behind me as the house image the uh their house style there oh yeah 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 that was jose luis garcia lopez right i mean his stuff his yeah. stuff what i remember reading like that style of comics is what i like even even speaking of cartoon like i got it right there I'm like, you got what i'm sorry superman versus wonder woman with uncle sam oh. back then <laughs> yeah and um, i got the justice league right over here look at the justice league there that same house oh okay cool cool i like that yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah sorry. yeah i mean yeah exactly but everything looks like but even then the justice league had their look batman superman whatever but you still had artists that had their own looks their own style especially like in the 80s and stuff and that's gone away like yeah. i can't tell one artist from the other and i think that's what's that's why i think comic books is dying because they become so corporate for these uniform looks and just like when I was trying to get into animation and uh, when I did jobs as a graphic designer coming out of college, they're like, well, we want it to look like Disney. It has to look like Disney. And they showed me some sample and I was like, you think that looks like Disney? That's not Disney. Like that looks like crap. I mean, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? But that was the thing. Like everyone was like trying to go for this uniform look and that's what's killed the art form because it's no longer art. It's really just, a, a product it's a corporate product for just yeah. to sell my you know my, my problem with modern comics too gimmicky you know back in the 90s yeah. the gimmick was usually you know different covers and having the foil covers and that was the gimmick to sell them yeah, now, that's it's, coming back. <laughs> now it's like oh well 
we're gonna revamp instead of you know like I was I, I did um on my honeymoon my wife and I unsurprising to most people uh honeymoon in Disney World and she surprised me with dinner with an Imagineer mm. and that meant I got to sit down and talk to an Imagineer someone who helped build stuff in the parks and and whatnot mm -hmm. and he told me how every seven years they start looking at a new at a, at a ride and then they start thinking how they can revamp it so there's mm -hmm. there's a process and that goes for the stores the you know everything in the park and i'm like i'm thinking back to comics and maybe it's about every seven to ten years you see a revamp right but something like with dc when they, I think when they revamped it to, what, the New 52. No, oh, yeah, big, big yeah, horror show. I think DC started to go down with that. That's when they started ripping me off even more. <laughs> um, I started a blog. You can look at my blog and you can compare I will, I will, I will, New 52 will. characters to my World Without Superheroes. <laughs> um, but, like, I think their last, well, they had two. I think their two last great crisis stories for dc if you will in in the 90s was final crisis you remember that was and zero one. hour which bombed yeah, zero. zero people but forget thought, zero hour bombed yeah but i thought that was a great story i just found an article funny that you brought that up yeah from the village voice 1994 i just put it in plastic i put it in plastic i found this mm -hmm. revenge of the fanboy it's an article yeah. it's it's this is a lot for a comic book article yeah. and it's both sides of the paper it's two yeah. sides actually it's a, two and, and a half that's the alan scott this is the, the, yeah. the article about this is the internet uh-huh this is when the internet started 1994 right it's like so the internet they're talking about inter what we would call an internet troll now or like how the fanboys hated this story and that the, with the rise of the internet now fanboys have a uh a, a, a voice right we call them trolls now but they yeah. had a voice on some website which i don't even think exists anymore and they talk about um basically how they just shot it down and say well you destroyed you know you you know they they, they had a uh, it was a good story but hal jordan became a murderer killed the entire green lantern's corpse i thought that was fantastic I mean, that was a good story, yeah, but it's a, but it just shows like how people were like responding in '94, yeah. how they hated that, uh, how they killed Green Arrow, right? <laughs> Superman kills Green Arrow accidentally. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I think they were really trying to compete with Image and and all these other books because well, the the reality is that the independents were really strong there, not just Image but Dark Horse and 90s, Now well, Comics and all those companies are out there. Um, everything had to be had to be kind of dark, you know. Once Spawn right. hit the market, I think everyone had to wanted yeah, their own had to catch up, and yeah. you know, and that's when DC does. Let's do the big death of Superman. Let's break Batman's yeah. back. Um, exactly. You know, Marvel Marvel removes Wolverine's claws. Right. You know, just well his adamantium, not his claws, but the whole thing. You know, like mm -hmm. everyone had everyone started to be dark. I, I and Doctor Fate is one of my all time favorite characters. Mm -hmm. That's why he's like centered up there, you know. I love him; it's great. I, I was Dr. just watching the Constantine show, and they have the the helmet of Naboo in one of the scenes. Yeah, they did the same thing in um, the new Star Girl series, I believe. Mm. In like the first or second episode, or maybe it was the third. I don't know. She gets to the the JSA, you know, headquarters, and um, and they you go around the room and you see the helmet there, and I'm like, okay. I'm See, hoping to give this guy a show already, right? Yeah. Well, I've always said DC attacked uh, their movies wrong. I think they should have started, always said they should have started with Dr. Fate. And mm -hmm. people look at me and be like, what? Why Dr. Fate? No one knows who he is. Well, unless you were a comic book fan, when Iron Man came out, you didn't know who Iron Man was. It's true. And Iron know? Man sucked as a comic. And, and he was <laughs> really... You know, he he may have been um, a known character in the Marvel universe, but he wasn't popular. No, he wasn't. And, and but he, he was but like then, a third string hero. Yeah, and you were able to turn him into a first string number one, number two. Mm -hmm. He was able to introduce this whole thing because of science. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Doctor Fate is magic. DC has a lot of great magic characters: mm -hmm. Zatanna, Constantine, whoever you want to want to name, right? Mm -hmm. But Doctor Fate 
has his ties in magic with mythology. It could have brought in characters, even if you want to go old school Hawkman, you know, mm -hmm. it could have brought in Wonder Woman, could have brought in Captain Mar well, Shazam, sorry, I always call him Captain Marvel. No, um, he is Captain and, Marvel. Yeah, and then as soon as, you know, and it, it could have brought in all these characters um, that really could have started tying stuff together. Everyone knows who Superman is. Everyone knows who Batman is. Right. No backstory on them. No one needs a new movie about them. They right. could have just came in, and if they wanted to branch off a movie from there... Well, you're going to get it. That's HBO yeah. Max's Justice League. They, they're yeah. putting back the Green Lanterns in there and Martian well, Manhunter. I, I don't know. I, I didn't... Uh, I, I saw it, actually. Cause I, yeah, I, they deleted Green Lantern. They deleted Martian Manhunter from there. They deleted Shazam. They deleted a whole bunch of characters. Uh, in that. I, I, um, I saw... I, I saw it on HBO Max. Not obviously not that one, unless that's a new one coming. It's coming, but, uh, 2021. Okay, because I never saw the movie fully. I didn't get a chance to see it in the theater. No, this is the six-hour uh, version. They're gonna do a six-hour version, as it was intended with Dark Side. I'm I'm okay with the that. Snyder cut. Yeah, I'm I'm totally okay with that. I I want to see I want to see good storytelling, especially through DC. I mean, I love it. I'm I'm a huge DC fan. Um, the characters I always felt were a little more fantastical than Marvel's characters were. Right. Uh, I felt there there was a what's the word I'm looking for? Almost like a light to DC, where Marvel was kind of was in the dark. You know, their right. characters always upset and having these problems. You know, you have these characters that DC's characters stood for what being a hero meant. You know. And even then, and the other ident the other crisis thing I was going to talk about was identity crisis. I thought that was a good one, but that and and you start seeing some darkness in in DC. I mean, you saw it before that, but like that story, I mean, it's that's the one with the Adam, right? The Adam and his wife. Uh, it was it was Elongated Man, I think, started. Elongated Man, yeah. His wife was was killed. But, like, yeah, she she was the murderer. But they they did rip a little bit off from the Watchmen in that they took the comedian oh, storyline and put it to Doctor Light. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying yeah. that's that was something that was a good story though. I don't see good stories too much anymore. My favorite DC book has always been um, which I can't reach right now, but New Frontier, Darren Cook's New Frontier. Oh, I yeah, think that's a good one. The cartoon's great. The cartoon is good, but I'm talking the comic. I never read the comic. Oh. Pick up the the omnibus of it. It's it's fantastic. I love, I love his take. To me, that's what I want my heroes to be. You know, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be in that era. I just want that. It is the Korean War and stuff like that, right? I believe it was Korean War. I don't remember now off the top of my head. But I feel like they're basically doing the Watchmen over and over again, but with the DC heroes. <laughs> Honestly, oh. that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Just yeah. like the alternate reality, uh, Earth One, Earth Two. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's it's the same. Like this is like I said, this is from 1994, mm -hmm. and the people that are complaining in 1994 are the the same complaints about. I don't mind DC being dark. I love DC as it is, but yeah. but, no, but it's like their stories are like right now. You don't have comic book fans writing comics, which was what comic books were. Yeah. Now you have these novelists and these famous writers and these Tom King and it's like and they suck. I hate to say it, but they're terrible because they're not fans, number one. Number two, they're in the reinvention mode. I'm gonna do it my way, like Frank Sinatra. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and then they don't understand the characters and they write these things like Flashpoint Batman was a good Batman. He was a darker Batman, but he was a good yeah. Tom King just turned him into a villain. They brought him into our world, and he basically tries to kill his own son, Bruce well, Wayne. I'm going to tell, tell you this. I don't know if I've – I don't think I've read that. I don't think I've really read any of Tom Oh, it's awful. Don't even bother. So I can't comment on that. Yeah. Uh, but these people – because I don't read a lot of mainstream these days. Right. I'm, I am I read more independent stuff. I, I've always been a comic strip fan, so I read mm -hmm. – um, like I just got in the mail the other day – I don't know if you're familiar with this. It's a comic strip from the 50s. King Aru. And the little guy looks familiar. The wizard looks familiar, but the king doesn't. Um, this is like a, Bob the Builder after retirement. Well, this was, this was a fantastic... 
strip, beautifully drawn, beautiful cartoony style. Yeah, nice. Yeah, um, it's like, kind of like a pogo type of thing. Yeah, yeah it very, very had that kind of yeah. look to it. And, Were you a fan of Windsor McKay? Um, I liked what he did, but he wasn't. I not. I can't. I don't own anything that he's done, so it's not like I'm. I'm a diehard. I have like seven of his books, but uh, I don't know if that makes me a diehard or not. But, but the reproduction quality was awful on like three of the four books. You know, but you're going back to like early 1900s with him, and well, the thing is, they, you know, he he drew like 19 by 24, like huge. Yeah. And then the, when they reproduced his book, they made it a sideways book. Oh, I hate that. And then they shrank down the art to like literally like this big, like like my fingers, yeah. like this no, big. It's uh, like, hold on, I'm just looking for the book right now. And it's like, if you're going to do like a spotlight on somebody that drew that large and to give it justice, it needs to be in those king size books, you know? I feel I feel the same way about the, the Starhawk book. You know that mm -hmm. company? You remember the Starhawks comic strip? Mm -hmm. um, that comic strip, when they read, when they put it in book format, it's just it's too small to read, right? You know, and when I bought it, it was shrink wrapped, so I couldn't look inside to see how it was done. But I loved the story, and I loved the artists and stuff on it. And all of a sudden, I look at it, I'm like, I can't read this, right? It's like you need a magnifying glass, exactly, you need a magnifying glass to read it. But I'm just looking. That's why they shrink wrapped it. <laughs> I'm looking into my. Uh, you can't read this shrink wrap it. They'll never know. <laughs> Uh, I'm just looking around my studio on my shelves and stuff. I have a lot, probably about 20, and I'm, I'm not, I, I know it's not the whole collection, but I have about 20 of the deep showcase stuff. Right. You know, I love those old books. I'm more of a golden, silver age fan. Day and night. Oh, nice. And he's an amazing artist. I mean, oh, you yeah, can he's learn so much perspective from him, but. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like. They have Gertie the Dinosaur, all that stuff. So these are like all like these king size pictures, right? Like newspaper. Remember, these are all yeah, yeah. newspaper. So they have these, and look how tiny they reproduce them. Yeah, exactly. It's like you lose. It's like, <laughs> why didn't you get a bigger budget? <laughs> it's like <laughs> you lose a flavor of the size and the the complex. Yeah. Look at this. This guy was like really detailed, but. With the scale, you just lose it, you know. Yeah. No, it, it. A lot of people don't understand. I think who they're putting books out for sometimes, or right. the companies that are publishing them. I don't. You know, they're they're not. You know, it's like, oh, it's a book people will buy because it has his name. He's a famous artist or whatever. But right. I, don't, I don't think. And and here's what I'm gonna say. I think everybody who's putting out the books think they're doing the best job they can. Right. But when you're doing a book. On an artist or artwork, right? Got to be at a level that the fans are gonna buy. You know? Exactly. You, you can't, can't read that lettering. That's like how tiny that is. It's like super tiny. Exactly. Yeah, it's terrible. This is a. Uh, I love the art, but I can't even really enjoy the edited by Rick Marshall. Fire him. Panda <laughs> graphics. Let me. Uh, I like panda graphic books. I like this. No, I have a bunch. Hold on, I want to. But that was just. Uh, that was just, it's like, whoa. But I thought it was great because his lettering was just hand lettering and it wasn't like anal, like it, it had, there's a beauty to the imperfection of it, but you would never find a book like that now that's hand lettered and it's not perfect because. Uh, Here, let me show you this. I'm going to have to get my down. screen for a second. But this is the Starhawks comic book. Right, let's collection. see um, hold on, just give it to me real quick. So, nice cover. All right. That was great. Okay, I'm a Gil Kane fan, diehard Gil Kane, love his work, loved him on Green Lantern. This is how the collection looks. Four strips per page. That's horrible. So small. How am I supposed to read that? Yeah, they're, they're, they're um, getting more bang for their buck. Whoever did that was like, not. they didn't care. Hermes Press. Hermes Press did that. I mean... Look here. Here's here's a section of dailies. You know. Terrible. How do you read that? I can't. It's 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 not something I can sit and enjoy. You know, and that's what I want to do with these types of books. Right, so, right. But uh, but yeah, I'm just looking to see if there's anything else I should pull out, real quick. Yeah, I don't see anything else I'm gonna pull out at the moment. I got I got tons and tons of books. This right here. 
just to show this is new frontier yeah. oh yeah that looks nice yeah i don't have that i have a lot of books oh, that style i mean the to me you know i've always been a less is more kind of guy um right. i i you know i loved all the old Hanna Barbera superhero characters, space. Oh, those are great. Hanna -Barbera. Johnny Quest. Yeah, all and that's all Alex Toth. And are, you, are you a fan of um, Adventure Brothers? <laughs> I I never saw the last season, but I got to watch it. I got I love. I haven't seen the last. Season. I've seen like the there's seven, right? I've seen the first four or five. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm kind of around there. I thought I thought there was I thought there was less, but um, no, there's seven seasons. Uh, yeah. It's it's a fantastic show. It's a true tribute. To all those old cartoons, right, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought it was. I thought it was hysterically funny. Those oh yeah, I, I love it. It makes fun of everything. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, just Definitely. So anyway, we should probably wrap up because yeah, let's wrap have, it up. Thank you, everybody who, who tuned in and yes, uh, getting tuned. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, thanks everybody. I will work on that animation. Maybe I'll have Ray back. We'll talk more. I always love talking with Ray. Um, when he's not cursing like a gutter sailor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem with that either. It's just on air. Yeah, maybe. Uh, in, in real life, I'm, I'm totally cool with all that. Uh, yeah. So, um, But, yeah, we'll totally uh, have you back. I'll show you some updates in the future. Um, and uh, next week... I have I have to I have to move the date just so you know. Normally I'm on Tuesday nights, but we got someone from Credit Chat that can only do next Tuesday, so I'm gonna move my um, my uh, get in tune. I'm gonna see if I can move it to Monday. I gotta talk with the guest if we can do it. My guest for next week is KJ Murphy. Right, right. Uh, so what is it? Guildworks Press. I mean, he's done tons of stuff. This guy is an independent uh, comic guy, and he's. He, he's one of those just good people in, in the industry. He's, he was one of the founders, I believe, of uh, Comic Artist Guild. And, oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, 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 he's always been a good guy when, when I've talked with him. So. Keith Murphy, I remember him. Yeah. He goes by KJ now, from what I understand, though. So KJ? Is KJ. that, like, that non-binary? or? I, don't ask me. You want to you wanna comment next week when I interview him? Yeah, well, I will. I'll find <laughs> out. I, I think he's just going by his initials now. It's that's uh, cool. Yeah, like like uh, like our 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 buddy um, J M DeSantis, who I interview, goes by J M. That's yeah. true, J M. And some people say, "Hey, Jim, that's not my name." <laughs> anyway. well, I, used to be, I used to go by Coffee Joe, and people kept calling me Joe. I was like, "No, that's my brother. I'm Coffee <laughs> Joe, not Joe." <laughs> so anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, talking with you you want to just give a little plug to tell people where they can go find your work yeah uh, bxhcc.com you can find all the bronx heroes comics we have uh pre-orders for you can order punchline number one the real punchline clown detective <laughs> and uh punchline the graphic novel the collected edition so i went from number one to the collected edition I skipped issues two, three, and four separately. I'm going to still put them out individually, but there's no shows to sell them at. So I was like, you know, I think it's going to do a collected edition. To be honest, you said you knocked off like seven issues during the quarantine season. Oh so my God. Look, you, yeah. You I, I'm about to break nine. Look at this. Uh, oh my this God. Look, look, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not bragging, but look, this is just, this is what I'm doing right now. Look here. Like, I'm just, this is just the current one I'm working on, right? But look at this. This is just, this is a stack here, right? This is one I'm working on right now. This is one issue. Look at this one. This one's, right? This is just one, right? You do this, is not, this is not the punchline stuff. This is a new series. This is the, this is the world without superheroes. You know, like uh, I was just working on this while we were talking. Like this. Uh, nice. You know. I like it a lot. Um, that's just one issue, right? And then if you turn around, what's this? This is this is nuts. My wife is like, I we don't have any we don't spend time together anymore. But it's like, look at this. this is like a, this is a, this is the other issue. This is the next two issues after it. Wow, right here. My God. And right. how many pages of per story is it? Uh one is 
22, the one is 24, the other one's 27. Wow. Um, so that's three issues. That's, so that's seven, right? Because punchline was four, right? And then, uh, hold on, let me take this off real quick. And I have this stack. This stack is Red Rage number two, right? Rage number two. Uh, yeah, because it started out as punchline number five, and then I was like, "No, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna part, make. I'm gonna make start crossing over, you know." Mm -hmm. Then I got five pages of a story I was doing with um, Willie Estrada, the, illustrating his his graphic. Uh, I mean his uh, his memoir. So mm -hmm. I got five pages of that. With I got the Red Rage, and I got like eight pages of anti capitalists. So that that's still inking that, but they're all drawn. Most of them are inked. Wow. Just got to do the touch-ups. And then, yeah, and then I got, like, the Bronx Heroes get merged with um, with uh, Punchline. I, you know, because, you know, the Bronx Heroes 2.0 basically took place in the 70s and 80s and 90s. This is, like, Ronald Reagan, the issue of Ronald Reagan and George Bush, the war without superheroes and the... There's a big mix of different stuff in here. This is like wow. 16 pages of that, you know, World Without Superheroes. And uh, it's like, and then there's more. There's more. This is this. Literally, I've drawn over the quarantine, I guess, two, the, two graphic novels, you know, like. That's you know? insane. Wish I had. I mean, I know I got sick and I actually had COVID. And then a lot uh, of shorts. I've lost, you know? I've lost a month of, of work, but That's I don't. I wish I had like the the speed that you had to do this. You know, I'm. I'm this is like long nights going to bed at four o'clock in the morning for three months. <laughs> yeah, but if I could, I would be working this. sixteen hour days. <laughs> I used to, you know, I used to do that stuff. I don't do it anymore. I'd yeah. like, to, like to get back. I mean, I, my my day job with travel is like twelve hours a day. So when I come home, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I only have weekends, so if I have things to do on weekends, it's just it's shot. So I'm really trying to create a schedule mm -hmm. where I can I can work in a in a very easy way. But I draw most of my stuff um, traditionally, but ink digitally and color digitally, and do mm -hmm. all. The same here, yeah, same so here. I'm going to um, I'm gonna. What I like to do is I like to work on eight and a half by eleven um, sheets of paper and kind of border out panels hmm. so i know like if i'm drawing on 10 by 15 um it's going to be 10 inches wide you know well, 11 by 17 border out 10 by 15 i know my border is 10 inches wide so i'll draw out a 10 inch border right I need three panels on that i'll break it up and i can be like oh well if it's one one tier and i break it up into three that's about five a piece mm -hmm. you know before gutter space so i uh i just make a five by ten on on a um, on an eight and a half by eleven sheet, and then I scan those in individually and put it together in Photoshop or something. Yeah, I saw a lot of indie guys work uh, way smaller. They don't do the eleven by seventeen. They're doing like eight by ten or mm -hmm. like um, I was working. Uh, the Dream Yard was coming over to my school, mm -hmm. and um, this guy, really good uh, illustrator. I don't want to fuck up his name. Let me see if I can remember it. I'm thinking. I'm good. Let me see what it was. Uh, really got good guy. Uh, shit, I can't remember his name. He's going blank. But he, he did the he did this this book on patriots, superheroes, and stuff. Um, why am I blanking on this guy's name? We, we worked. We worked like literally like uh, I think it was like once or twice a week mm -hmm. for like a school year or most of the school year. And and he worked with the kids doing comics, and they were terrible to him because it's middle school. But, <laughs> But we had this like this guy's like has his books that like, go all over Barnes and Nobles, you know. He's like he's worked on major projects, and he drew out of his sketchbook finished work. Like he was doing like this, a sketchbook yeah. a little bit bigger than this, and basically doing finished pages, you know, watercolor. Yeah, it's, it it comes down to what are you, you know. First of all, if you're gonna draw that small, you got to scan it at a very high resolution, mm -hmm. to pick up the space. But yeah, his was a little bit bigger. His was eight by ten, but yeah. Yeah, and I I have a nine by twelve. I like to draw, and I don't I don't I like to draw in small small books, and I don't like to really draw in large large books. Yeah, but for me, it's making sure I have the proportions correct. Mm -hmm. So once I get the proportions, like I don't care what I'm drawing in, 
And if I can carry it in a sketchbook, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just not a big sketchbook person. Right. You know? um, Me neither. I like to draw very loose and sketch. I have a lot of sketchbooks, but I don't draw finished art in sketchbooks. Something about an, uh, one of my teachers told me about losing the energy. Like he says, you put all the energy into the sketch. Then when you go to the finish, you kind of lose it. Yeah. So I, when I, I have like tons of sketchbooks, but I don't go more detail than this. This is like, yeah. these are like very loose drawings. Very, I don't go really that detail. When I was younger, I did, but now I just everything's very loose. Yeah, well, I want to. The most I'll do is maybe take a sharpie and this is like a. I don't. I don't try to. Michael disappeared. <laughs> it's like this is this is as loose as I. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I even get very even looser than that. Um, Do something like this. And that's I then work from there. This is like my references when I uh, nice. when I actually sketch. Right. Just try to get a loose thing. Yeah. You know. so I'm looking for one thing I want to show you. Um, that's not it. That's not it here. Well, maybe I can show this to you. Is that Bob's big boy dressed as Superman in the back? Oh no, that is uh, Mr. Fan. Uh, I mean, Mr. Incredible. Mr. Incredible. The the Incredible. That's his original suit, the blue and black suit. Oh no, no, not that one. Someone with the little boy. That's cool, though. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, no, that is something. My mother. Is that like a Cupid Manny's? It looks like one of those Taiwanese. Toys. I'll, uh, I'll, I, I actually have to bring you over because he's, he's museum putty down. Hello? Yeah. Hold on. Okay. No, my computer just, uh, I, had to, I had to remove my Cintiq. So it just blanked for a second. But this is something my mother, where is it? Um, I'm looking for the camera. Yeah, my mother guy, painted yeah. that in ceramics in like 1981 or 83, it says on the bottom. Wow. And, uh, she, you know, I'm, you know, obviously a big comic guy, I'm a big Superman fan. So she made the, uh, she made having him brown eyes so it looked like me instead of having, uh, yeah, having the blue eyes there. Is that an original Beetle Bailey page? Uh, no, that's a print uh, uh -huh. I got. Um, I used to love that cartoon. Amazing piece. The Beetle Bailey up here is a, uh, also a print, but it's signed by Mark Walker. Do they still write him or no? Yeah, they still do it. His, his son's work on it. There's a little bit of a team from what I understand. Um, but I don't know if they both work on Beetle Bailey or one works on Beetle Bailey, one works on High and Lois, or if they both all work together and then one just draws. Yeah. You know? um, I wanted to show you some of a, a comic page of something I was working on. Hmm. I can't find it now. Uh, here are some old Plunger Pup uh, pages from when I was doing his webcomic. Hmm. And what this is here, you know, it's done in comic strip form. Oh, yeah. Um, but these were done on on 8.5 by 11 paper, and I drew the panels, and then I traced them onto um, 11 by 17 here. Pretty cool. Uh, and that's how I, how I basically work. So I had, like... Uh, not that page. Just seeing if there's any good pictures to show. Like here's a here's. Of course an, there is. You know, here's an example of something I have here. Nice, nice. You know, very detailed. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was able. That's why I was able to do it that way. I have um, I have a book I'm doing called Tales of Heroes. Mm. And that's, that's what I was looking for right now. Tales of Heroes, um, is is a, a throwback to like silver age comics and i have my characters in there and they're like a, a team of heroes i have my own there's a magic user there's a cool. like there's a the card game what like the card game what, what do you mean, mean? Like, oh, no, not, not like the no not like the card game there's a guy he's a he's a he's a native american right who can walk between the worlds of the living and the dead ah and has um so he's kind of more of the creepy, mystical character. Um, there's a super spy who is enhanced by, you know, technology. Think of him almost like a like like a six million dollar man, but with better right. bionics, if you will. And right. then I have my patriotic character, 
So they're the team. They're the core team. Right, and right. the first story, my friend Don Smith wrote the first story for me. And in the first story, it takes place, the, the, the Native American character's name is Nightwalker. Nightwalker has disappeared for years. Everyone thought he was dead, and he resurfaces when, when this thing that he, was, that he tr thought he destroyed or made or, or took care of, mm. you know, has resurfaced. And, you know, you find out all this stuff, and I have a... So I have a 12-page story written by Don. I also have another three-page story written by Don introducing the super spy character. So mm -hmm. I'm just I'm going to draw that out. That's 15 pages. And I think I want to do one small side story of, um, of the patriotic character. And if mm. I can get that to be, you know, maybe another five pages or so, it'll uh, you'll have a 20-page book there. And I want to do that. My goal is to have that done by... Oh God! Like September, October time. Mm -hmm. you know, pencil colored everything. I have another book I want to do, but first I'm working on my children's book. I'll show you kind of a piece out of that, and then I think we're gonna definitely have to end it. Um, but it's about a monkey who loves to draw, and it's called Oodles of Doodles. This is what I'm currently working on. This is the sample. Concept oh, cool. the con and so what happens in there it's a rhyming book pre-k to like second grade maybe even third simple reading the word the biggest word i have in there is the word imagination you know mm. it's, so this that's, is that that's that's the way to go kids books are the are, are where everyone's even dc is doing a lot of ya books now if you notice oh yeah yeah uh my that's my, where the money's at speaking of my friend don he he asked me he goes have you ever thought of doing plunger pup as a kid's book, and the answer is absolutely. I've thought of lots of things, but mm -hmm. you know, number was there one, a time when he wasn't a kid's book? <laughs> no, but I'm saying I'm, <laughs> that's a little scary. You know, like I collect, I'll show you. I collect kids' books because I love them so much, mm -hmm. and I have. <clears throat> let's just pull out some of these here. Here, I have. I want to get something. Really cool that you might be like, oh wow. So, so like here, things from our youth. You'll remember these from our youth. Pac-Man. Oh my god, I never even seen that. That's cool. I remember the cartoon though. Uh, a Heathcliff Christmas story. I love Heathcliff. I used to love Heathcliff. I used to own all his comic strip books. God knows what happened to them. And War of the Gobots. The GoBots, that was like the bootleg Bronx version of Transformers. <laughs> and then last but not least, Masters of the Universe. Oh, yeah. That might have been written by Gary Cohn. See, who wrote that? Because um, he wrote a lot of the early uh, comic strips that came with the toys. Uh, John uh, John Hughes. Bill oh, John Hughes. Al McWilliams. And what I so like that's like about a 16 Candles uh, version of uh, He-Man. <laughs> uh, so, like, this is what I liked about it, you know. It's these simple pictures, but when you go through it at some parts, and I'm just looking for it, um, yeah, like it was almost comic. It was like almost introduction to comic, reading comics. Yeah, it's like Prince Valiant, really. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, this was great, and you know, then when you look at something like Heathcliff or Pac-Man, it's all Heathcliff. it's like one picture, words on the other side, you know. Um, yeah, I've been dying to do little children's books like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's basically yeah. illustration. Yeah. I kind of want to do a few of these, but that's what I'm thinking Oodles of Doodles sort of is. Years ago, I used to have I used to participate my students in the Ezra, G, uh, Ezra Jack Keats contest. Yeah. Uh, that was citywide. They still have it. And the top winner got a few thousand dollars. Honorable mentions got an Ezra Jack Keats pin. <laughs> but they would, uh, if you were really, I think that number one person was like, got published wow. uh, through Scholastic. And I used to have my high school kids do that. So at first they would laugh like this project. You give them like, and they would give you like 30 books every year. So I had like, all these children's books. Yeah, yeah. Um, And you pass them out to all your students and they're laughing. And then they really start to get into it. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is that it's not about reading the books. Well, it is to introduce yourself to the format and 
Mm-hmm. But it's really that they had to create their own. And that was like from scratch, like cover and everything, like old school printing. Yeah. And we used to do that. So I, I love children's books too. Yeah, my goal yeah. is to have that done. It, because I'm starting a new job, it might fall off like by a week. But by the end of uh, end of uh, July, this book will be should be done and ready mm-hmm. to go to print. And I'm going to self-publish probably through like Amazon or something. And Yeah, do it. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, do it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you're getting tired. I see you yawning. So either I'm boring you or you're tired. I don't know which no, one. Oh, man, I'm having a fun time. But I'm just I am tired. Like, I had a long day. I got to I got to finish up. Uh, I'm doing this right now. It's like uh, working on a. Wow. Bob Sidaro's page here, like this. Uh, we I had saw this Sidaro. one a few weeks ago. What's that? I had Sidaro on a few weeks ago. I interviewed him. I love Oh, yeah, he's great. I had to finish up four pages to go. Yeah. I, I haven't laid out. I just haven't inked it yet, so I have to get to the inks. So I'm just like, well, I will I get to it tonight? I don't know. And then I got to wake up and teach yeah. remotely. <laughs> well, I got I to gotta drive into the city, so. That's great, man. I mean. I'm glad that they got you back there, you know? Yeah, no, I love the job. I just, I'm not happy with commuting, you know. My, oh, yeah, the commuting is good. You have a foul mouth. You should co- drive with me. I are mean, you, you put me on the phone. <laughs> are, you, are you still looking at a, are you still looking for parking in the morning or are you just going into the garage? I, I, I kind of gave up and go to the garage. Just, <laughs> it's just like, why am I waiting an hour for yeah, this stuff? Exactly. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even doing that, but yeah. It's so insanity. I, so, yeah, honestly, with travel, I put in 12-hour days and, I got to be up out of the house by like 6 30 in the morning tomorrow. So another reason I got to cut it short is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, well, we've gone on for almost two hours. I know. What is it? What has it been? Yeah. An hour and 46. Well, we're definitely going to have to do it again. I'll definitely bring you on. When yeah. I'm the animation again. We'll talk. I always enjoyed chatting with you and, yeah. when we're, and, and, you know, we should be able to start getting together at least for like lunch or something. Uh, yeah, like, you know, absolutely. more stuff's opening up and stuff. And um, yeah. Definitely. You can always come here for lunch if you'd like, you know. I'm um, I'm always open. So I don't have a, I don't have COVID. I'm COVID free. I hope not. So I COVID am- is like the new uh-huh. HIV. It's just like the I shouldn't make fun of it as well. It's like it is. It's like it's become like this is like the virus everyone's got. You know, it's like uh, you know, like in the eighties you're like everyone you knew at least two or three people that had it, you know, and, and you knew a few people that died from it and it's a somber thing, but we have to kind of like add humor to to overcome this twenty weeks in my house. I mean, yeah. I think I spend more time at home than I have in my entire life. <laughs> I, mean, I, I'm, I'm, I don't mind being home. I, it's, it's, it's yeah, I don't mind either. I think it's great. I mean, look at the work I showed you. I did, but it's just it was never a thing. If, you know. I'll be honest. If I didn't lose that month, I would have been done with the children's book by now, and I would have been. Uh, I would have probably had all 12 pages of the first story arc, like right. pink and colored by now. And right. I would have been working on the other pieces. So, um, yeah, losing losing basically all of April mm-hmm. and taking some of May to recover, I never fully got back. It took me it took me till basically June to start getting back to work, really. Like, oh, I could do this. And then June, at end of June comes and it's like, well, now I got to go out to work and work for the camp and uh, right be out there. So, you yeah, know. give give Butterbean my. Uh... <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk privately about that later. I forget the name of that guy. What was his name again? That was Yuri. He's, Yuri. Not, he's not there this year. <laughs> give Yuri my love. <laughs> Send him my uh, well wishes. <laughs> I will if I see him. All right. <laughs> Take care. I'll talk to you later. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Uh, it to- I'll try to be I'm, I'll make the announcement if it's going to be Monday or Wednesday, whenever KJ can reschedule for. Right, right. Have a good night. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.